Now there is shudud. That means this guy he narrated the hadith in a way that against like hadith stronger than this hadith. Or there is an and this is only for the scholars, they know if there is some problem with the hadith. So basically, to have hadith sahih, we should look after all five conditions. And as I said before, there is <coughs> there is no ilm, there is no knowledge about something similar in any different religion. It's only in Islam. That's why when we say this hadith is authentic, we really mean it. It's, it's not like anyone else might say, like, oh, this is what we say in our religion. These are the conditions of Bukhari or in general? This is all in Bukhari and every hadith sahih. We will talk this. You know why, why Bukhari is like the most authentic book in hadith? Because for, for Tisal, like if, if a guy say, Oh, I, I hear this hadith from this person. The Bukhari, his condition is to see if the age of them, it's, it's like very close, so there is one possibility to meet each other. This is what, this is how, how the, the, the scholars of the hadith look. To see, looking for, to see like if there is possibility or not. But the Bukhari, he said, no, until I know some witnesses, they say this person met this person and listened to the hadith from it. That's why it is very strong. It's very strong foundation. It's all for connection, how they, how they get connected. That's why the Bukhari, they have the, the most authentic hadith because his condition is very strong. So now, keep this in your mind, five conditions, for the authentic hadith. If each one in the chain trustful, have a good memorization, it doesn't mean the hadith is authentic unless we know the connections and there is no shadud, there is no nothing against this hadith, and there is no discussion between the scholars about the hadith. There's some some uh, situations when when the scholars discuss something about some authentic hadith, which is sahih, but there is something in this hadith that make this hadith less than the sahih. Whether in the metal or in the sadat, in the chain or in the saying of the Prophet Okay? So, again, the sahih, whatever has these five, conditions. So now, today we will talk about hadith. It's very common in our community. All people know this hadith and they use it a lot. And they use the first part of it and they forget the rest because they like it. And this hadith reported by Abu Hurairah, so we don't need to because last, last halaqa uh, we talked about Abu Hurairah, so we will not go through this again. And we know Abu Hurairah, who was he, right? Abdul Rahman al right? We talked about, about Abu Hurairah last uh, week. So this hadith reported by Al-Bukhari. And as I said, it's the most authentic book. So. This is Muqtasar Sahih al-Bukhari. So anyone knows why al-Bukhari wrote this book or gathered this hadith all together? Come on, Shafab, you should know this. Well, I heard a story that, that he was a uh, scholar, like he was like studying in a, like, in a group. Yes. And one of the scholars say like there's a lot of people, Hawaii. Yes. Yeah, out there and like they are like some things that go in palaces, going inside. So why would one of you young youth yes. prefer, like um, try to gather all the sahih all yeah. together. Yeah. Yes. So we, we decided at that yes. time that he And there is another reason. He said 
I hear my sheikh saying this, or some of the scholars, they said his sheikh ordered him to do this, Ibn Rahawi. But he said, this comes to my heart. But then he saw the Prophet وسلم, in a dream. And he saw something in his hand. And he tried to protect the Prophet So he interpreted this, that he will gather all the authentic hadiths. And he will throw all the weak hadiths away. So he protects the words of the Prophet That's why he wrote this book. And it took him like almost 16 years to gather all these hadiths. And he used to, when he put each hadith, he used to make ghusl, pray to rak'at, istikhar for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's like a lot of good work happened with this. And he started his book with Inna Mal A'malu Bin Niyat with the first hadith that we talked about. <coughs> that the action depends on the intentions, even though it's not the chapter. Well, because he starts with the wahi, with the revelation, the start of revelation, but he put the intention at the beginning. That just to tell us like, whatever for the sake of Allah, it's for the sake of Allah. And I start my book with, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this hadith that we want to talk about, it starts with, إِنَّ الدِّينَ يُسْرِ Indeed, this religion is ease, religion of ease. This religion is easy. And we always say like, الدين يسر, الدين يسر, الدين يسر. Whenever we do bad thing, we say this, unfortunately. Whenever we get in trouble, we say, الدين يسر. But, is that what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meant when he say in the dinayus because if you ask a brother like why you didn't come to salat al jumu'ah he said i couldn't and religion is easy so for sure not that what the prophet sallallahu meant by saying in the dinayus this religion is easy First of all, there is a lot of hadith and a lot of ayat confirm this meaning. And I try to gather some of them so at least we will know it's confirmed in Sharia, in many ayat, in many hadith, that this religion is a religion of ease. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ridu Allah bikum al yusra wa la yuridu bikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intend ease to you, not difficulty. And he said, He chose you and he he chose you and he didn't put any difficulty upon you in religion. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants ease to us, so he will not put any difficulty. Because we know in the previous nations, it was like some practicing, it was like so difficult. Like in some, in some nations, like if there's like dirt or filthy things on, on their clothes, do you know how they can take it out? Cut it out. Yes, there is no other way. You have to cut it. You have to take your clothes and cut the filthy thing. And then you are able to pray with it. But now we just wash it. That's it. And some of them, to make tawbah, you have to kill yourself. And we know these stories. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this religion easy for us. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant. And even the Prophet sallallahu in many, many hadith, I just try to gather some of them. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, Lan al Like you will not take this religion 
by heart worship. And he said, Halak al Those who, who really get in hard to this religion, they will destroy themselves. They will destroy themselves. And he said, the best deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the deeds that you continue on it. You keep it, even if it's a little. And he said, no one of you will be saved by his actions. And then they asked the Prophet Sallallahu even you? He said, even me. Unless Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will cover me with his mercy. So, doing a lot of good deeds, if it's more than what you can really handle or over your capacity, it will be very difficult. And you will not be able to continue. That's why the Prophet said, Iyakum wal Wulu. Don't be uh, over obedience on yourself. It will be very difficult. You will not continue that way. And he said, Khudu min al ma Take from the good actions what is what we, what you can handle, what, what you can do. And in another uh, in another hadith, the first of this hadith is reported as authentic because it's reported in Imam Ahmed. He said, Inna hadha deen mateen fa'awdilu fihi bi rifq. He said, this deen is like really wide. So when you want to enter, go take it easy. Don't go and make everything hard on yourself. And there is a, some like addition to this uh, relation which is not really strong. He said, don't make the worship of Allah uh, don't like hard to you or don't make the ibadah hate it to yourself. Like don't hate the ibadah by doing a lot of actions. So this is the hadith. So many, many of these ahadith confirm the same meaning. And as I said, a lot of ibadah, it doesn't mean you will enter Jannah with your ibadah. And it doesn't mean you are good. Why? We know the hadith that authentic that the Prophet وسلم, when he tells us about the khawarij, he said, if you compare your salat to their salat and your ibadah to, your, to their ibadah, you will despise your ibadah. He said that when they read Quran, it never goes over their tongues because they, they, they can't really reflect the meaning of Quran. But they have too much ibadah. They, they like almost kill themselves by doing a lot of worshipping. He said to the Sahaba, to the Sahaba, he said, not us, the Sahaba, that means the people who really worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, you will despise your worship to their worship, your salat to their salat. But he said, يَمْرُقُونَ مِنَ الدِّينِ كَمَا يَمْرُقُ السَّهُ مِنَ الرَّمِيهِ He said, they go far from this religion, just like the sah. Do you know when we take the arrow and, and throw it away? It's, it start here, they start from Islam. But they fast away, they go far from Islam to somewhere else, far from the Islam. So Ramiya is the goal? Yes. So Sahel, I don't know. So when they, when they start from Islam, they start worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they don't really realize the meaning of Islam. And we have a lot of groups like this these days. So this is from the time of the Prophet That's why the Prophet said after this, he said, لَيْشَادَ الدِّينَ أَحَدْ إِلَّا غَلَبَةً 
whoever try to make their religion difficult on himself, he will not be able to, to continue that way. You will make it difficult to yourself, and you will not be able to continue. And he said, فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا Saddidu from Sadda. And they said, al qawm is Salid, it's like the perfect qawm, the perfect saying. And Saddidu, that means, you know, if you have a wall and there is a hole in it. So, if you want to cover this hole, if you make it big, it will be something really not nice you do to your wall. But to make it equal, that means sadda. When you said sadda al So, saddidu, it means make it perfect, make it nice with the easy way. Waqaribu, that means be near the perfection. No one can be perfect. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَعْتِمْ Fear Allah on your ability. No one can, can be perfect. No one. No one can be perfect. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَعْتِمْ So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا <coughs> Try to cover the errors in your religion, be near the perfection, and wait for the glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why he said Abshil? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala merciful. He will be cover us with his mercy and we will enter Jannah. But still now, if we say this religion is religion of ease, of ease, that means we should keep the obligatory things, and then whatever is extra, we should take it easy. One step, and then the other one. When we can keep some ibadah in our life, and then next level, take a step further, Start another ibadah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made some ibadat obligatory upon us. One, each second, you have to do it. What is it? Each second you have to do this ibadah. You have to have this ibadah in your heart. Tawheed. You have to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and each second in your life. And the other one is for your day. Right? Five times a day. Each day you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times in a different time so it will come up the whole day. And what the reason? Indeed the salah let you avoid the indecency and bad actions. So you will avoid by actions by doing salah. So this is for your day. And one month, what? It's Ramadan. Yes. This is cover the whole month, Siyam. And then for the year, Zakat. Zakat. You do it each year if you have money. And then once a life, Hajj. Hajj. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cover all the times for you. Whatever extra, whatever extra, you should take it easy. So you can't neglect in, 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 in in the obligatory thing, and you say, deen is easy. It doesn't work this way. 
That's why the Prophet Sallallahu said, فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا Cover the error and be near the perfection and then wait for the glad tidings. And whatever you offer extra, it makes you closer to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, and it makes your level in Jannah higher and higher. You didn't say anything for the week. Hmm? You said every second, every day, the Malay will be. Jum'ah. 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 But it's still like Jum'ah, it's considered one of the prayer. Yeah. Yes. So I can't say it's, it's, it's obligatory because I said it's it's Salah. So it, it covers everything. Is Jum'ah is obligatory? You have to know. Jum'ah? Yes. Yes, Sheikh. No one from the scholars said it's not obligatory. So Jum'ah, you have to go to the masjid and pray Jum'ah. And it's yeah. very bad to waste your Jum'ah. Because it will seal down your heart if you miss three Jum'ahs. Which is really bad. Okay. So now, if you if you do the obligatory things and then you take the rest of the religion easily, try to add to add to your religion the ibadat step by step, and try your best to do a lot of ibadat, and then. The Prophet Sallallahu said, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالْغُدْوَةِ وَالْرَوْحَةِ وَشَيْءٍ مِنَ الدُّجَّةِ This is the end of the hadith. This is the rest to think of the hadith. So the Prophet Sallallahu gives us an advice. And this is like very clever advice. He said, Seek strength or get strength by three things. الْغُدْوَةِ الْرَوْحَةِ And some of الدُّجَّةِ so the Prophet ﷺ tried to compare our life here with the life of the traveler. You know, at that time, in, in Arab land, it's really hot. So if you are traveling in the Arab land, it's really hot. You have to be careful. You can walk early morning, not under the sun, and then after, let's say, before Maghrib and after Maghrib, when the sun a little bit goes down, and you can walk at the night. So the Prophet وسلم, said, seek strength with these types. And that means a lot of things. First of of all, we are in trouble in this life. So we just like anyone in trouble. And these times, it's very good times for Ibadah. For Tasbih, for Dhikr, for Salah. It's very good times. And some of the scholars, they said, like whatever you can do in this, you will achieve succeed. They said, even, even, uh, the work. If you want to do something, do it in these times. But still, why the Prophet Sallallahu said, استعينوا بالغدوة والروحة evening, oh, before the evening starts. And he said, شيء من الدلجة. الدلجة means the dark, the night time. But he said, شيء, some. Why? Is it allowed to like to have all the nights with the qiyam? You have to rest. 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 That's why. So some of the night. And the other meaning of these examples. This time is the time of easy walking for the traveler. So he said. Choose the ibadah when it's easy on you. That's why there is seasons. There is some places which is the ibadah will be more valuable to you. And for us now, the day 
is short, night, long, we can easily offer soap. You can wake at 6 and offer Qiyam al-Layl. So, <laughs> it's, yes. So, it's easily you can do Qiyam for like at least two rak'at and go to your work. But how many of us do this? So the Prophet Sallallahu he pointed very good point in this hadith. So whenever it's easy, do it. Don't make the ibadah difficult. Then you will not be able to continue. If you make it difficult, like soon or later, you will stop. You can't continue. That's it. You can't continue. So now, if you start a difficult ibadah, it will end. And then you will lose the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will not continue doing th this. It's just like you you promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do thing, and then you break your promise. Imagine if you said, by Allah I will do this. It's the same thing like when you start, <coughs> especially in the Hanaf Madhab we say, al-shuru' al-shuru' bil-amal. He said, like, if you start an action, you have finished it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تُبْطِلُوا أَعْمَالَكُمْ Don't invoke your actions. Don't, like, cut it. So, that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best deeds, it's, it's what, what, you, what you hold on, what you, what you continue, what you offer often, even if it's a little. So, some of them, they said, when I... The drink of water, I say Alhamdulillah. I keep this in my life. I, I never forget this. It's, it's, it's the Prophet وسلم, said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes if someone drink or eat to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's ibad. And if you <coughs> if you start with small things, you will continue, but don't start like go so far, and then you will leave everything. Maybe you will feel even the obligatory thing to be very difficult, to you. because this religion is like really easy. As I said, there is no difficulty. It's just like some worships that you do like in, 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 in each second, which is tawhid. You don't have to carry anything on on your back or do anything. You just like keep your iman inside your heart and you can you the iman. And then salat, <coughs> siyam, hajj, zakat, that's it. And then if you want to offer extra, take it easy. And the Prophet sallallahu give us this example to show us we are in trouble. We should take things easy just like the trouble, take it easy and choose the right uh, time for ibadah and try your best and inshallah uh, you will achieve success inshallah Amen. so any questions Sheikh? so what is the full hadith inna ad-deena yusr wa lay yushad ad-deena ahad illa ghalaba فَسَدِّدُوا وَقَارِبُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالْغَدْوَةِ وَالْرَوْحَةِ وَشَيْءٍ مِنَ الدُّجَّةِ And there is a, another narration but it's not the same at the beginning وَالْقَصْدَ الْقَصْدَ تَبْلُوا It's also in Bukhari But this one is not start the same وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالْغَدْوَةِ وَالْرَوْحَةِ وَشَيْءٍ مِنَ الدُّجَّةِ وَالْقَصْدَ الْقَصْدَ تَبْلُوا Same thing like it means قصد. Yes. So when the Prophet says in the Medina Yusuf, this is the day of the day of peace. Yes. So you mean that that it's it's easy, like more easy compared to like the previous Sharia of like the Christians and Jews and uh, yes. the other. It means two things. Don't make this religion difficult. And there is, uh, you just remind me in the Hadith, 
that Aisha she said the Prophet وسلم, never have a choice to choose between two things unless yes he choose the easiest Malam again we don't stop Malam Yakul Ithman see because we, we just like oh in the Yus the Prophet he used he used to choose the like the easiest thing but there is a condition Malam Yakul Ithman if it's not bad or it's not sin, it's not ithim. So if it's not ithim, you should choose the easy thing. And this is sunnah, it's the sunnah of the Prophet And just a one addition here, like you can make things difficult when you change the ibadah or you, when you make a lot of ibadah. There's two ways to make it difficult. And we should be careful. The first one, you will make it difficult. It's a little bit, let's say, it's not recommended. And the other one, it's bid'ah. It's haram. You can do it. So, if you say, I want to pray under the sun. No, it's haram. You can't do it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't ask you to hurt yourself. <coughs> if you say, I will create some ibadah, very difficult. Now it's bid'ah, you created something else, it's haram. But if you say, for example, I will do qiyam for the rest of my life, and I will do this, and I will do so, and I will do this, and this, and this, and this. You will not be able to continue. It's not recommended. You should start easily. And there is a hadith about the three people who came to the houses of the Prophet when they when they said the worship of the Prophet it's, it's, it's not really difficult. They asked the wives of the Prophet and then when they informed about the ibadah of the Prophet they said this is like really easy maybe because the Prophet ﷺ got all his sins forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so one of them he said I will fast I will never break my fast I will never open my fast every day I will fast and the other one he said I will pray during the night I will not sleep for my life and the other one he said I will not Mary. So the Prophet Sallallahu when he heard about them, he said, Ma balu afwami? Why, why some people they said that this and this? And he said, By Allah, I'm the one who most fear to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala than anyone else, and I pray and I sleep. I fast and I break my fast or I open my fast some days. So he fasts some days and open his fast some days. And I marry women. He said, whoever doesn't follow my sunnah, he's not a part of me. He's not one of my followers. That's it. Okay. There's also hadith related to this. Uh, when the Prophet uh, asked people to do uh, Hajj um, and someone asked Yes, the, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he recommended to do a lot of things, but as he said, he said, like, do do it easily. Especially for Hajj and Umrah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another hadith, continue doing Hajj and Umrah. It's take away the fakr, the poverty, and the dunu away from you. So it takes the sins and poverty away from you. If you continue doing Hajj and Umrah. And this is to encourage people to do Hajj and Umrah because if you do Hajj and Umrah, you spend a lot of money and time. And it's not easy, it's difficult. So the Prophet Sallallahu encouraged us to do it. But as I said, take it, take it easy, take it easy. Why? Because if you say like, oh, I will do it every year. Maybe 
a year will come like you will not you will not do it and you just like promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do it yes so what, what whatever you, you can do like there is uh, even another hadith when Aisha she mentioned a lady to the Prophet and she mentioned a lot about her salah and siyam and he said this religion is religion of ease she shouldn't like go like that difficult I think there is a, another hadith also so it's when uh, a guy talking to the Prophet وسلم, he said this guy this and this and this so the Prophet وسلم, he said like don't be loud like you will destroy him if you let him hear you saying this about him why before I continue uh, if you say something that would probably be things about someone he will uh... you just open the door for the shaitan to come to his heart yeah. well, he probably if you want if you want to talk up like in a good way about someone don't do it in front of him. At least say like, نحسبه على خير والله حسيبه. It comes in another hadith. Like I think he's good, and Allah subhanahu wa taala knows better. <coughs> if you want to talk about him, so if you say, oh, I know this brother, in front of him, and he's like doing this, uh, he's paying zakah, he's paying more charity, he's offering salah, you know. Whether he wants or not, he will like it. <coughs> because the shaitan, he, he, he wants him to like it. And then when the knee, with the time, gets changed, he said, the Prophet you will destroy him. You will destroy him because he's doing good deeds, and then suddenly he will lose all the hasanat all the rewards of it so that's really like you will destroy him he will get nothing so the prophet وسلم, also said mentioned after he said this he said this religion of ease you could keep it like easy yes. I feel like because some of the scholars they have a lot of talk about this hadith but for me it's with with the good intention you would reach this reputation because to have a clean heart is not easy it's really not easy especially with, if, if, if people really like bother you or they harm you with their times with their actions with their like and you still keep your hearts clean Allah it's, it's, it's very big ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you do it for the sake of Allah yes I have a question about the uh, second portion of the hadith uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said yeah. so in this open world that we use today the word siddhidu like means like amen yes so so when I, when I first heard that I, I, I don't remember that I, I the Shah the explanation of the Hadith before, but when I hear this word, said it to hear the Hadith before, what came to my mind is like as if you have like a, a board on the wall, like with circles, and you try to aim at it and to to to, to make it in the center of the same thing. Like what what do you say what Ya Ladina Amanu, it What does it mean? Like Yes. Or Rashid in another form. But it's still like to aim, like to hit the heart of the matter. Yes. So it's like to make it perfect. So you can't actually be perfect, but you can be close enough with your ability, with your capacity. So that the meaning Sendidu Waqarib is very close. Yeah. Like make it perfect 
but you can, so make it near the perfection. Don't ha don't become like high or less. Like try your best to, to be like perfect. So the way they explain the hadith, like the old school, when they explain the hadith, they use this like metaphor like the wall and the like No 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 no. No, I just want to give you an example. What about like what what the meaning of sadda? <coughs> Not about sadda. Yes. I, I want to explain the root of the word. Okay? JazakAllah khair. Any other questions? I'll go to the phone. I'll go to the phone. I'll go to the phone. I'll go to the phone.